Okay guys, back by popular demand, we're going to have a nice little discussion about the coronavirus and gun control. We're going to call this part two. And I was honestly debating about even doing this, but people have been asking for it. And I figure the situation, not only the virus in itself, but the situation has grown substantially since our last little talk about this. Now, I think a lot of people are waiting for me to change my mind or to say that maybe we should be concerned about this virus uh, in light of certain situations or certain publications, I should say, saying that this uh, virus looks like it will be potentially in the U.S. in circulation for the next year and a half or 18 months. Now, I'm honestly going to say that my position hasn't changed significantly since I made my last video. And the reason why is, once again, looking back historically at viruses that have plagued the U.S. and the world internationally, this isn't untypical. If we just go back a few years to the H1N1 or swine flu, as it was called, remember that that flu was in circulation from approximately 2009-ish to 2011 was when we really saw the end of the swine flu as we knew it. So that was in circulation internationally and infected up to approximately a billion individuals, anywhere from 770 million to a billion individuals. And once again, it ran its course of time for two years. So this type of scare tactic that's being pushed out you know, making it seem like this coronavirus is so dead, so deadly, so dangerous, and that it's going to be here forever for the foreseeable future. The reality is, yes, the coronavirus probably will be around for the next 18 months. What should we do? Well, we should do the same things that we've always been doing and taking natural precautions not to touch our face, to wash our hands, use hand sanitizer, and of course, limit the spread of any illness by staying home when you are sick. These are general precautions that seemingly most Americans, most educated individuals, have forgotten. This stuff seems like it should be natural. Uh, I myself, in my medical program, you know, this is some of the first things they teach you, is how to properly wash your hands, when to wash your hands, when to use hand sanitizer. This stuff isn't complicated. It really should be basic for so many individuals. However, it's not for many. So, honestly, you guys should be following natural precautions and be cautious. And at the end of the day, understand that this disease will pass. I, ha I want to keep fortifying and re-fortifying this emphasis of the disease will pass. People get so caught up in the moment. They get so caught up in what's going on right now. And they forget that, like all diseases, it will pass. It will go away. You know, humanity has weathered through many diseases. You know, many people forget about the little known tuberculosis that was honestly plaguing humanity for hundreds of years, but due to modern technology and progression in health and treatment, we have nearly eradicated tuberculosis. Now, it's not permanently gone. There are still people who have it, but understand that things like tuberculosis, TB, are even more contagious than coronavirus, yet we as a human, humanity or humankind, practically used our brains to about wipe it out from humanity. In fact, you rarely even go around thinking until this coronavirus came out, you know, that the person coughing right next to you had any issue, when in fact they could have had TB, which, like I said, is even more contagious than coronavirus. It is extremely contagious. So understand that humanity is smart, viruses aren't, and that we will get through it. Now, I also want to re-emphasize because, once again, the situation has worsened uh, since we've talked last, and gun control has continued to grow. And in fact, as I've much feared and saw coming, uh, politicians are using the fear of this situation that we are allowing our media 
to project upon many of us in civilization uh, to get their whims, to get their wishes pushed through, even if it's just temporary. Understand that no form of gun control is ever okay, even if it's just for the next year and a half until the coronavirus, you know, settles out. It's not okay. It's not okay for a short time. It's not okay for a long time. Even a day of gun control is too much gun control. Okay? So we do need to understand, and more than be checking our feed, seeing how many people have died from coronavirus, we need to be checking where are our politicians with guns? What are they doing with our guns? And this goes for local, this goes this goes for local, this goes for state, this goes for federal. Now, luckily, the federal government hasn't been pushing any gun control, but there have been many local cities, boroughs, and counties that have been pushing gun control. There have been states pushing gun control. There have been states making, even here in Alaska, I'll reemphasize, here in Alaska, there have been shelter-in-place laws that are aimed at closing gun stores. And one thing I will say if all of you are so fearful of this coronavirus, the last thing you want to do is knowingly or unknowingly strip yourself of your ability to defend yourself with a firearm. Now, I'm not hurt by this so much because I already have enough firearms that I feel comfortable with, but for those who still need to get them, for people who are still in need of ammunition, firearms, training, you know, and all the equipment that comes with firearms, you don't want your politicians taking those things away. So I will re-emphasize that the two biggest points that I made in my first video, I'll make in this video, and I will continue to make, is that this virus, this disease, whatever you would like to call it, will pass. And two, that we need to keep an eye on our firearms, our freedoms, and making sure that no level of legislation is passed. Because we understand that our politicians are trying to do a good thing. They're trying to mitigate our exposure with other humans that may, possibly could, might have this said disease. But the, the point is that some level of restriction is necessary and appropriate, but it should not come to infringe our rights, such as our Second Amendment, such as our First Amendment, Third Amendment, Fourth Amendment, all of them. No, no thing, nothing that our government puts into place should openly go against these amendments, okay? So, getting back to the core of the conversation, guys, stay vigilant, support Gun Owners of America, NRA if you feel like doing so, the Firearms, Firearm Policy Coalition, I believe they call it, the FPC, um, get behind these, uh, get behind these organizations, because Remember, they need you now more than ever. So instead of stockpiling all that toilet paper, spending thousands of dollars on dumbass face masks, give those dollars to the people who are fighting for your rights. And at the same time, when you're giving it to those people who fight for your rights, you don't have to go outside. You don't have to venture. You can donate from the comfort of your home in social isolation if you feel that's necessary. Lastly, I would encourage all of you to still remain and remain alert of the situation, primarily regarding gun control, and also stay active. Don't use the social isolation as a tool of justification or manipulation, saying, I can't go out and do what I want to do. Now, yes, once again, things such as gatherings, meetings, fairs, whatever, have been closed. But in many states, my state included, you can still go out here. You can still go hiking. You can still go hunting. You can still go fishing. You can still enjoy nature. So don't use social isolation as a means to go sit on your computer, sit on your phone, sit on your, or watch your TV, rather. You know, don't necessarily use this as a time or an excuse or justification to stay at your house. Stay active. 
stay active and stay well. Be so stay active. And I say this, and I really mean it, because once again, working in my field of work in healthcare, I can tell you that one way to naturally build up your immunity is to stay active. When you're active, your whole, when you're physically active, your whole body is active. When you're engaging yourself in a walk, in a hike, in a hunt, in a fish, or in a fishing situation, uh, you're getting your whole body moving. You're forcing your lungs to work. You're forcing your heart to work. You're putting your body to work. And when you do those types of things, your body's much happier. So if you want to find a good way of natural prevention for something like the coronavirus, stay active, stay healthy, take vitamins, and do what we've been doing so far as humans and mankind to stay healthy and active. So that's my message to you. Like I said, not a lot's changed, but unfortunately, the politics have gotten a little bit crazier. So as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.